Roanoke College. Timeless and true. Smart and solid. Practical and professional. Making discoveries about yesterday. Creating visions for tomorrow. Lifted by a winning college spirit. Forging lifetime friendships with professors who prepare you for a place at the head of an operating table or another bright future. Roanoke College. Classic for tomorrow. Mac and Bob's opened for business in 1980. Over the years, we've grown from 10 stools to a full-service restaurant that seats 330 people. Now we invite you to come try our new breakfast menu featuring sweet potato pancakes, eggs benedict, omelets made to order, stuffed French toast, homemade sausage and gravy biscuits, and much more. Open for breakfast Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m., Sunday brunch 10 a.m. till 2. See you for breakfast at Mac and Bob's in Salem. On a rainy day in sunny Salem, it's the Eastern Mennonite Royals and the Roanoke College Maroons. Good, e- good afternoon, everyone. I'm Nick DeSantis, alongside Brett Peltz here as the Royals have come down to take on the Maroons. Eastern Mennonites 17-2 and two on the season. They are 13-2 and two within ODAC play. Roanoke 4-12, four 4-8 and 12, four and eight within ODAC play. The women have lost three straight, including last on a 10-point loss up at Washington and Lee, dropping them to 4-9 and nine within the ODAC, while Washington and Lee improved to 6-8. and eight. Paxton Gwynn led the Maroons in that one, as she has for most of the season, with 16 points and 9 rebounds, followed by Tatum McKee who had nine points and five rebounds before fouling out. Bryant, you said you had a chance to watch that game. Anything stand out to you with the absence of Nicky Motes? The effort of the rest of the players. The effort was great. Uh, they missed a few too many layups. If they had made them and converted little things, they would have won. But that happens when you're playing a lot of freshmen. But the effort was outstanding. Roanoke shot 37.5% from the floor. Has won two straight, coming off a big win over Mary Baldwin, 92-46. to In that one, the starters today for Eastern Mennonite, Caleb Baltimore, Alyssa Brown. Kayla Yotters, Stephanie Reinheimer, along with Shakira Snikes. Eastern Mennonite will be in their road blues. Roanoke in the home whites will be back with the opening tip-off. And the Roanoke starting lineup coming up after this. Be sure to catch Roanoke College Sports on Valley Vision TV, Comcast Channel 7, in Roanoke, Salem, Botetourt, Lexington, and Blacksburg. Brought to you by Mac and Bob's Main Street, Salem. For programming information or schedules, go to valleyvisiontv.com. For information or schedules on Valley Vision TV programs, visit us on the Internet at valleyvisiontv.com. Remember, you're watching the Valley's only true local network, Valley Vision TV, Comcast Channel 7. Mac and Bob's opened for business in 1980. Over the years, we've grown from 10 stools to a full-service restaurant that seats 330 people. Now we invite you to come try our new breakfast menu, featuring sweet potato pancakes, eggs benedict, omelets made to order, stuffed French toast, homemade sausage and gravy biscuits, and much more. Open for breakfast Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m., Sunday brunch 10 a.m. till 2. See you for breakfast at Mac and Bob's in Salem. If you would like to sponsor this program or advertise on Valley Vision TV, call us at 540-397-1051 or email to sales at valleyvisiontv.com. Remember, you're watching the Valley's only true local network, Valley Vision TV, Comcast Channel 7. Roanoke College, timeless and true, smart and solid, practical and professional, making discoveries about yesterday, creating visions for tomorrow, lifted by a winning college spirit. Forging lifetime friendships with professors who prepare you for a place at the head of an operating table or another bright future. Roanoke College, classic for tomorrow. For information or schedules on Valley Vision TV programs, visit us on the Internet at valleyvisiontv.com. Remember, you're watching the Valley's only true local network, Valley Vision TV, Comcast Channel 7. Be sure to catch Roanoke College Sports on Valley Vision TV, Comcast Channel 7, in Roanoke, Salem, Botetourt, Lexington, and Blacksburg. Brought to you by Mac and Bob's Main Street, Salem. For programming information or schedules, go to valleyvisiontv.com.
From the Bastetter in Salem, Virginia, I'm Nick this alongside Brett Peltier. It's the Maroons and the Royals here this afternoon. Starting lineup for Roanoke, Laurel Hankins, Paxton Quinn, Rachel Delahunt, Taylor Duggins, and Tatum McKee. McKee, as well as Duggins, both freshmen out there. The only upper class, but for the Maroons, is Delahunt, the junior, Quinn and Hankins, both sophomores. As these two teams, Brent, size-wise, match up very well. With the absence of Nikki Nuts, neither team has a player over six feet tall. That's correct. It should be should be a battle. Nobody should have a size advantage. We'll see how Roanoke does playing their second game in two days, back-to-back. The Royals in the blues, blue top, blue shorts, with white lettering and black trim. They will go left to right. Roanoke in the home whites. Maroon lettering, maroon and black trim. They're going right to left. Maroon's coached by Susan Dunnigan in her 31st season. Dunnigan over 580 wins for her career. Roanoke leads this all-time series with Eastern Mennonite 60-24. to Nick, I've known Coach Dunnigan since two years before she left as a high school coach, so I just gave away my age. Dunnigan assisted by Lynn Richmond, Jim Robinson. Roanoke left three days off for their next contest. They travel on the road to Emory and Henry on Wednesday. Paxton Gwynn in for the opening tip with Yotters. Gwynn knocks it back towards her own end, controlled by Delahunt. We're underway here at the Bass Center. Roanoke and Eastern Mennonites squaring off. Delahunt brings it ahead, got a pick up high, dances all the way in, has it punched away, it goes right to Paxton Gwynn. Gwynn turns, looks for help, kicks it out, Hankins thinking three, walks in down low, wanted to feed that one one more to Gwynn, couldn't take away by Baltimore. He will come back up the other way, crosses over on Duggins, left wing feed now Reinheimer. Reinheimer tries to go inside, that one out of the reach of Sykes. Eastern Mennonite opened up in a man to man. Eastern Mennonite will apply pressure to this young Roanoke team here early. With Duggins goes back across to Tatum McKee, now gets it back. Duggins looking ahead, again goes to McKee. Trying to shake out of the press. Duggins comes to the near side. Hankins has some space. Drives through the paint. Kicked out. Delahunt thinking three. Holds on. Drives to the lane as it knocked away. Down low. Hankins blocked from behind. Delahunt gets it back to the glass. Unable to get two. Sykes the rebound. Show outlet. The Royals will head back the other way. Looks like Eastern Mennonite is going to press Roanoke when they get the ball out of bounds. As Brown not, unable to connect on the layup. They're not going to press on missed baskets. Roanoke has had a lot of trouble with the press with such a young team throughout the season. So that's probably a good move by the Royals. Duggins trying to drive in from the right side. She's fouled. Count it and one. First points of the game belong to Duggins and the Maroons. 112 in. Duggins and Delahunt did this all night last night. Finding driving lanes to the basket. Duggins able to convert that one and draw the foul. Duggins at the line for one. 62% from the line this season. Can't connect. Rebound Tatum McKee. Leaves it for Duggins along the baseline. Gets the offense set up as she finds Hankins. Hankins will go out to the point now for Delahunt. Good hustle by McKee on the box out the foul line. 15 seconds to shoot. Delahunt breaks to her right, gives it up. Duggins for three. That one off the mark. Rebound pride loose by Tatum McKee. She's got another one. McKee dancing along the baseline. Her awkward layup doesn't go. Gets her own rebound. Third try has it swatted away. Still with it. Tried to kick it out that time. Taken away by Yotters. Tatum McKee all over the place for Roanoke. Hannah Ward and Tatum, Tatum McKee certainly lead in the hustle for the freshman class. That's now an offensive foul caught against Sykes on McKee. And they show the other freshmen how it's done, which is a great help. Nikki Motes will be missed as her senior year, unfortunately, is over with the sprained MCL. But as Hankins from the corner for a three, that one off the mark. If you want to look for a good thing, just look at these freshmen, a lot of experience. Paxton Gwynn called for the foul underneath on the rebound. It'll be her first, team's first. Two minutes in, we'd like to welcome those of you listening on 100.3 FM WRKE here in Salem. Also streaming online at WRKE.org. Eastern Mennonite will work the offense. Their first set. Offensive series as Sykes sends it towards the left side for Brown. Tries to drive through the lane and lays it home for two. Good drive by the young Eastern Mennonite player. She saw the opening, took the ball to the goal. McKee looking for help. Gets it for Delahunt at midcourt. Almost lost it, got it back as she turns away from pressure. Two and a half minutes into a 2 2 game. Duggins hands it off for Tatum McKee. McKee on the near side, Paxton Gwynn for three. That one no good. Good look by McKee. Good effort by Gwynn. She was open. Roanoke's going to have to take open shots with this young team when they see them. It's down low, a foul against Roanoke. Again against Paxton Gwynn. That's her second, team second. That hurts. That's not. We don't need the experienced players getting into foul trouble. Samantha Garst about ready to check in. At the line is Reinheimer to shoot two. She's able to connect on the first. As Gwynn will head out, Garst checks in. The 17-12 mark of the first half. We'll see how long Gwynn stays out of the game. Reinheimer 90% from the line this season. Averaging just over 11 points per game. Coach Kevin Griffin is in his seventh season. He's been trying to build a team at Eastern Mennonite. 
And this year he's done it. They're 17-2 and two and 13-2 and two in the ODAC. His best record so far. It's a three-on-one. Down low, Garsh. She's blocked from behind. Great work by Reinheimer, who connected both of her three throws moments ago. Make it 4-2. As Eastern Mariner hits the trailer. Jumper no good out of the hands of Yar. Rebound Tatum the key. And it's going to be a foul call against Eastern Mennon as opposed to a jump ball. Tatum McKee, again, good hustle on the boards, and able to draw the foul. As the young woman from Eastern Mennonite, number 20, grabbed her wrist. Against Yotters, her first team's third. Lead pass taken by Delahunt. Moving up the right side, kicks to the near side, hoping for Hankins. Out of her reach, she's able to keep it in bounds. Goes to Duggins, who will work the point. Duggins tries to roll into the paint, finds nothing, goes to the corner for Delahunt. Wants to come along the baseline, goes to the double team, as Garst is blocked again. Great work by Reinheimer, down low. As Reinheimer brings it up, goes across to Baltimore. Baltimore towards the far side. Brown for three on the way. That one no good. Rebound taken by Delahunt. Good box out by Rachel Delahunt. Eastern Mennonite is playing a very aggressive man-to-man on the defensive end, causing problems for Roanoke's execution. Hankins at the foul line. Pulls back. Her jumper falls. Game tied at four. Laurel Hankins has been shooting better since about a third of the season has gone by, and we like to see her make that shot from the perimeter. At the top, Reinheimer tries to set it down low. Tatum McKee took it away. Numbers thrown up back in the way. It's a two, three on two. McKee goes in. She's fouled by Reinheimer. Tatum McKee again very aggressively after the ball. Makes the steal. She's been on the boards this afternoon. A great help to the Maroons. Able to draw the foul on the drive, and she'll be the line for two. McKee at the line for two. No points so far. Four rebounds, three coming on the offensive end. And we're just over four minutes in. McKee, the freshman out of North Carolina. Unable to connect on the first. 62% from the line this season. Has two subs in the game. Lemke for the Maroons. Bianca Yagarzi in for Eastern Mennonite. Kayla Lemke enters for the Maroons. McKee at the line for her second. She hits it. Roanoke up by one. Cappy Sullenberger to check into the game for Taylor Duggins. As Eastern Mennonite will pick it up. And move ahead. Just over four minutes in the opening half. 5 4. Roanoke up by one. There's Reinheimer, a three on the way. That one, no good. A battle for the rebound as it goes towards the corner to the floor is Lemk- or McKee. Not much of a surprise. Good hustle again by Tatum McKee. Rachel Delahunt caught a little bit behind the screen, but Reinheimer missed the three. As Reinheimer inbounds to Baltimore, Eastern Manhattan will control the offense once again. Fresh shot clock for the Royals. That's down low. Yotter's able to bank that one off the glass. Roanoke seems a little bit confused on the defensive end uh, at this point as to who has who. They're picking up their offensive assignment a little bit late. As Dillon comes to the near side, pass tipped on its way up. Burns will retain possession. Now the Eastern Mennonite will make a substitution. Checking into the game is Marley Young. Young into the game for Brown. That's Makita inbound. Gets it in for Delahunt, 15 to shoot for the Maroons. But Delahunt at the point. Breaks to her right. Got a pick from Garsh. Looks towards the corner. Still finds nothing. Seven seconds to shoot for the Maroons. As Sullenberger back for Delahunt. Spots up a long three. That one off the front of the rim. Then goes up off the shot clock. Good effort by Rachel Delahunt late in the shot clock. Again, uh, Eastern Mennonite's very aggressive man-to-man defense is causing problems for Roanoke's offensive execution. You've got to give the Lady Royals credit. As Baltimore will go to the left side to get things set up. Balls back to the middle. Faked using the pick. It fooled Sullenberger. Has an awkward shot. No good. Out of the hands of Yotters. Rebound to Kayla Lemke. Good offside rebound by Kayla Lipke. If Samantha Garst can stand up a little bit stronger, she might be able to draw a charge there. As McKee stood up along the right side, hands it off for Lemke. Lemke covered by Baltimore. Lemke goes back out to the top, moving to her right. Really locked up as Solenberger tried to cut inside, couldn't. Goes down to the floor to keep possession. Wanted to get it for Lemke. It's turned over. Shot clock hasn't reset. Ball will roll out of bounds. Last touch by Eastern Mennonite. Rather, last touch by Roanoke. Possession to Eastern Mennonite. Again, the aggressive defense by Eastern Mennonite causing problems for Roanoke. Roanoke is uh, a little slow with the ball movement this afternoon. Looking at the floor a lot, a lot of dribbling. As Baltimore sends it out to the top, getting a pick was Young as she turns it back. On the left side is Baltimore. Covered by Sullenberger. The Maroons have gone onto a 2-3 zone, it looks like. As an outside shot, no good. Out of the hands of Yotters, rebound Sullenberger. Tatum McKee carries it ahead before handing off to Delahunt. Under 14 minutes to go here in the first half. 6-5. Eastern Mennonite with the lead. As Delahunt gets a pick from Garst, now turns back off the pick and roll. Garst really nowhere to go. Comes to Lemke on the near side. Lemke tries to drive on the baseline. Underhand no good, but they say she was fouled. Kayla Lemke with the charge that time. Ball turned over to Eastern Mennonite. Again, you have to give credit. The Royals are playing fine defense this afternoon. There's a timeout on the court. 13-36 to go in the first half. Roanoke trails by one. Roanoke College, timeless and true. 
smart and solid, practical and professional. Making discoveries about yesterday, creating visions for tomorrow. Lifted by a winning college spirit. Forging lifetime friendships with professors who prepare you for a place at the head of an operating table or another bright future. Roanoke College, classic for tomorrow. For information or schedules on Valley Vision TV programs, visit us on the Internet at valleyvisiontv.com. Remember, you're watching the Valley's only true local network, Valley Vision TV, Comcast Channel 7. Mac and Bob's opened for business in 1980. Over the years, we've grown from 10 stools to a full-service restaurant that seats 330 people. Now we invite you to come try our new breakfast menu featuring sweet potato pancakes, eggs benedict, omelets made to order, stuffed French toast, homemade sausage and gravy biscuits, and much more. Open for breakfast Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m., Sunday brunch, 10 a.m. till 2. See you for breakfast at Mac and Bob's in Salem. Fouls against Lemke, her first, team's third. The offensive foul will give EMU possession. Already a one-point lead, 13 and a half to go. Here in the opening frame, as Baltimore sends it along for Zumfeldick. Comes to the near side for Marley Young. Young goes inside. As the Royals down low, an offensive foul called against Eastern Mennonite. As this one is against Garza. Rolling Oaks defense, for the most part, has been just as good as Eastern Mennonites. We have a 6-5 score with 13-20 to go in the first half. Foul against Garza, fifth team foul. That's Kevin Griffin. Some questions for the officials. As it's inbounded right to Paxton Gwynn, who moves ahead. Gwynn will head man up the right side. Put the brakes on, look across, can't find a trailer. Tries to get Duggins coming through the middle. Still nothing, has to get rid of it, lost it. Able to get it right back. Gives it up for Duggins. Duggins will go out to the point. Roanoke with 15 to shoot. Roanoke is dribbling themselves into some trouble. They're dribbling themselves in the corners of the court where they can use the baseline and the sideline for an extra defender. As Roanoke goes inside, three seconds to shoot. Out for Paxton Gwynn. Gwynn for three, good if it goes. That one, no good. Good effort by Paxton Gwynn, just a little bit long. As Baltimore tries to drive it on Duggins, kicks out towards the far side for Young. Young steps in, back now for Baltimore. Baltimore to the near side for Zumfelde. As it's fed inside, Zornberger pushed it away, he able to get it right back. Zumfelde, a long three, that one no good. Duggins able to control the rebound. Good backs out by Paxton Gwynn and Taylor Duggins. Duggins able to come up with the ball. As Duggins sees the lane, kicks towards the corner. Hankins for three, count it! Great play by Taylor Duggins. They didn't stop the ball. She was able to penetrate deep and kick it back out to Hankins for the three. As Baltimore gets it back from Zumfelde. Goes to the near side now for Young. Eight minutes into the first half. Back at the top, Zumfelde. She goes inside for Egarza. Turn around off the glass. That one no good. Tatum McKee. Another Paxton Gwynn gobbles up the rebound. Jump ball call. Possession will be awarded to Eastern Mennonite. Great defense by Paxton Gwynn. She caused a, she competed without fouling. Turn around and get the defensive board. Unfortunately brought it down a little bit low and was tied up for the jump ball. Jose into the game for Eastern Mennonite. McKee and Ward enter for Rono. Ward for the first time. 11.56 to go. In the first half, Roanoke up by two. The far corner, Marley Young, tries it inside a foul away from the play. As Hankins got dumped by Igarza. That'll be her second, team sixth. They called a moving screen. Often, Nick, the person with the ball causes that because they move with the ball before the screen is set. So the screener has no choice but to move, and that causes the offensive foul. Sykes screeners the game for Eastern Mennonite. As McKee inbounds for Roanoke, hands it into Ward. Back to Tatum McKee. She looks to Duggins, who's locked up. McKee will carry it ahead herself. McKee puts on the Jets. Now pulls up. McKee back along the right side, looking for help. Comes across for Hankins. It's poked away. Now in a foot race. Zufelde gets to it. Goes in. McKee able to knock it away. But she's called for the foul. And goes hard to the pillar below the basket. I think she tripped over her own player, Laurel Hankins. Thankfully, Hannah Ward and Laurel Hankins are okay. The Lady Maroons don't need to have any more injuries. Valgas McKee is her first, team's fourth. Roanoke needs to watch the cross-court passes that go that far across the court. Uh, a hustling defense can steal those and head the other way, as happened that time. As we've seen Tatum McKee take balls away. One fast break, so that she came close to another one. As the first foul shot attempt from Yodders is good. As Alyssa Brown and Shandell Taylor check in for Eastern Mennonite. As she's got the line of Zumfelde. As she's connected on the first. Now to tie it. That one no good. Gwynn up after the rebound. Last touch by Eastern Mennonite. Possession will go back to Roanoke. Good effort by Roanoke on the boards again. Roanoke again are doing the same thing they did last night, which is what you need to see. They're competing with such a young team. Duggins ahead. Kicks to the corner. Gwynn thinking three. Instead goes to McKee. Defender passed to McKee from the foul line. That one rattles out. Tough break. Up by Tough break by Tatum, Tatum McKee. You need to do that. Take the ball to the basket when your defender's behind you. As in Felder, a nice athletic shot up off the glass. Eastern Mennonite back up two. 
out of one. Under 11 minutes to go in the opening half as Duggins will carry ahead. Duggins has been able to penetrate the Eastern Mennonite defense for a kick out. Hankins goes to Duggins along the far side. Duggins skips it through the middle for Tatum McKee. Drives inside, gives it for Duggins. Eight to shoot. Duggins all the way in, hands it off down low. That one off the side of the backboard from Paxton Gwynn. That's now a travel call against Osei. Roanoke will get it right back. I believe uh, number 13 for Eastern Mennonite told Osei that watch behind you the defenders there, and it actually caused the walk. Ward's inbound, gets it in for Hankins. Now a fresh 30 for the Maroons offense to go to work. Hankins out to the top for Duggins. As Duggins looks to drive in, rolls back to her right. Kicks it for McKee in the far corner. It's punched out as she tried to drive. Possession will stay with Rona. As Delahunt checking into the game to get Taylor Duggins. McKee to inbound from the far side. 20 left to shoot. 9-8. Rona trailing Eastern Mennonite here at the Bass Center. Once again, Nick, 10 minutes into the game, you have to give Eastern Mennonite credit for very aggressive man-to-man defense. It really is causing Rona problems. Eight to shoot. Ward along the right side. Tries to go baseline. Sends it down low. Gwynn off the glass. Can't get it to go. Gwynn able to pry it away. Count it. Paxton. It should have been a foul against Gwynn. She had her by the shorts. Well, she's <laughs> being very aggressive and able to corral the offensive rebound after the miss. She shot the original shot a little bit too quick. It's down Here. low. Sykes off the glass. Gets two. Here comes the full court press after a made basket. As Rona gets it ahead for Laurel Hankins. Hankins gets a pick from Paxton Gwynn. Goes to the top for Delahunt. Rhodes offense getting set up. Trailing by one past the midway point of the opening half. As Ward goes down low for Gwynn. From the near side, tries to drive. Call for the walk. As Reinheimer checks back in for the Royals. Again, you have to give the Royals defense a whole lot of credit. Roanoke needs to penetrate from the top of the offense, which is beyond the top of the key at this point. He's on the far side, Alyssa Brown. Try to go out to the top. Pass alert to everybody. It's backed up by Sykes. Roanoke sitting back in a 2-3 zone. That's down low. Looks like that one partially blocked. He's trying to barrel in was Marley Young. Great defense by Laurel Hankins. As Roanoke got it ahead, then it's punched away. Look out. Back to the way is Sykes. Sykes in. Unable to get past McKee. Missed the layup. Tatum McKee has it back to 3-2 through midcourt. McKee lost it. Looks to work. Now from the foul line, she's blocked. She had Hankins open to the near side. Played McKee a little indecisive. As they go down low for Sykes, she's unable to handle the pass. McKee also had a shot early. That's now a technical foul. has been called against Sykes. Technical foul is on Sykes. It's Sykes' second foul. I imagine Roanoke is going to send Laurel Hankins to the line to shoot these. Hankins' second best of team in free throw percentage at 73. As Hankins unable to connect. It's like slamming the ball against the wall out of frustration. Uh, you can't do that. You can't slam the ball off the floor or against seats or against the wall. or That's automatic. Laurel Hankins, one for two from the line with the technical foul shots. Tatum McKee will inbound the ball underneath the basket. This is a technical foul from point of interruption. Ronald has tied the game at 11. 8.44 to go in the first half. As the Bruins get it in for Delahunt. Delahunt blanketed by Brown. As she moves slowly ahead. Roanoke is in the one and one for the rest of the half as Eastern Mennonite has seven fouls. Eight and a half to go. Out of the first 20. Has kicked towards the corner for Ward. Ward out to the top for Delahunt along for McKee. Ten to shoot for the Maroons. McKee gives it for Ward. Ward sees the lane, tries to drive in. Knocks for Delahunt from six feet out. Able to connect. That was actually knocked away from Hannah Ward, but uh, Rachel Delahunt alert, aggressive, able to hit the six-footer. Roanoke with a two-point lead. As Baltimore plays catch with Taylor on the near side, as she gives it to the corner. Back out to the top, it goes for Baltimore, covered by Tatum McKee. The Maroons look content in their 2-3 zone. As Reinheimer tries to go inside. Igarza turns off the glass, no good. Rebound popped up by Tatum McKee, but it's taken by Baltimore. He's going to pull it all the way out with a fresh 30. Baltimore tries to drive in, rolls back. As she kicked it out for Taylor, who walks in. Her floater, no good, punches it for rebound. Hankins has it. Again, great hustle by Tatum McKee. Once again, I know she's a youngster, hasn't played that much. I'd like to see Samantha Garst hold her ground and see if she can't draw a charge. She's backing up when they penetrate. Ward out of the corner, all the way through the lane. Her floater, no good. Great effort by Hannah Ward. She just wasn't able to knock it down. Rebound knocked out of bounds off of Eastern Midnight. Possession will go right back to Roanoke as Duggins and Goodell enter. They're in to get Hankins and Ward. Clock frozen at 7-18. Roanoke up by two. 13-11 the score. Goodell to inbound from underneath. As Goodell 
Gets it in for Delahunt, thinking three, steps in. Baseline jumper, that one no good. Good good shot fake for Delahunt, just left it a little bit short. Long lead pass for Taylor, one more, no good. As Yotters couldn't connect, McKee reaches in. And she'll be called for the foul. And rather, the foul's going to be on Yotters. She held McKee after the rebound was grabbed. These Mennonite players continue to show frustration and came very close to another technical foul. Foul on Yoders is her second, team's eighth. McKee at the line for a one and one. McKee 62% from the line this season. 7.06 to go in the first half. This is a one and one. As McKee able to connect on the first, up to a three point spread. Again this afternoon, the Eastern Mennonite is playing very tough half court defense, but you have to admire the competitiveness of the young rolling up players. As McKee connects, as she hits two of two, and that's part of the one and one. As Baltimore coming back in the way, goes to Taylor in the near corner. Seven minutes to go in the opening half. As it's cycled out to the top for Brown. Brown trying to drive in, splits the defender. Great move to the cup. Unable to get it to go. Saves her own rebound, but right to Rowan up. Duggins now will head back in the way. Duggins has McKee underneath. She'll hold on. The offense gets set up to the near side. Goodell going to try a three. That one no good. Delahunt controls the rebound. Goodell had a good look. Just look didn't go in. down low. McKee off the glass. Unable to get it to go. Great pass by Rachel Delahunt. McKee just left it a little bit short. Eastern Mennonite the other way. Blocked by Delahunt, but she's going to be called for the foul. That'll be the first on Delahunt. Fifth team foul. Nice defense by Delahunt. There's a whistle and a timeout on the court. Six and a half to go here in the first half at the Bass Center. 15-11 the score. Mac and Bob's opened for business in 1980. Over the years, we've grown from 10 stools to a full-service restaurant that seats 330 people. Now we invite you to come try our new breakfast menu featuring sweet potato pancakes, eggs benedict, omelets made to order, stuffed French toast, homemade sausage and gravy biscuits, and much more. Open for breakfast Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m. Sunday brunch, 10 a.m. till 2. See you for breakfast at Mac and Bob's in Salem. Welcome back to the Bass Center. A four-point game. Believe Brenton, this is the biggest game, or biggest lead we've seen for either team so far in this game. Comes with 6.30 to go. In the first half, Roanoke up by four. This is a defensive game so far, but that's what Roanoke has to do in order to compete now with, with this roster is play great defense and see what comes of it. Reinheimer is at the line for two after the foul charge to Delahunt. Prior to the timeout, she connects on the first. Reinheimer 90% from the line this season. Reinheimer has cut it to three. Now two. And she hits two of two. As they're doubling down low, Delahunt able to find McKee. McKee comes back to the near side for Delahunt. As she'll walk it ahead, approaching midcourt again, blanketed by Alyssa Brown. Delahunt able to clear the timeline. 15 seconds left in the shot clock for Rona. As she goes to her right for Duggins. Duggins tries to drive in from the foul line. Down low for Garst. She's blocked, but no, a foul going to be called against EMU. Two shots coming up for Garst as the foul against Osei. Good execution that time by Roanoke. Sam Garst to the line by, for two. As Garst unable to hit the first. Roanoke really needs to hit these uh, foul shots and score with the clock stopped. Really try and extend the lead while they can. Garst 67% from the line coming into today. She was just six for nine, and she misses both. A little long, a little hard that time. As Baltimore feeds to her left, now back to the goes for Ose. Now to the right for Brown. Back to the top, a three ball from Reinheimer is no good. Rebound taken by Brown as that rebound skipped all the way out. As Baltimore from the point, comes to Brown on the near side. Brown covered by Duggins, Burns are back in a man-to-man. Roanoke had good position on the rebound, but sometimes you get crazy bounces off missed threes, and that's what happened that time. Osei down low. It's like one official wanted to call an offensive foul, the other calls a travel. Good defense, good double team by Roanoke in the post. Young young woman from Eastern Mennonite shuffled her feet before she was able to get the shot up. Paxton Gwynn to re-enter the game. She's at the scorer's table. Haven't seen Gwynn since her two fouls early on in this contest. As McKee got her defender in the air, able to move in. Two on the guards down low. McKee holds up, kicks it out for Duggins. Duggins tries to work a lane, can't. Kicks to the corner. McKee for three. Yes! Again, Duggins penetrating for the kick out. The second time this half that she's made it easy for a three. Got an open shot. First time it was Hankins. That time it was McKee. Sullenberger and Hankins have joined Gwynn at the scorer's table. Roanoke up by five. Five minutes to go in the first half. 
Eastern Mennonite down low. A shot off the bottom of the rim from Reinheimer. Roanoke will look back. Look out. Duggins in all alone. Lays it in for two. Gallahunt and Duggins pushing the ball down the floor. That's what Coach Dunnigan wants because of Roanoke's deficiency in size. Try to get the ball back down before the defense gets set and get an easy one. That time they were successful. Great defense at the other end to start the play. Time help taken by Eastern Mennonite. Roanoke has up the lead to 7. 4.50 to go in the half. We'll be back after this. Be sure to catch Roanoke College Sports on Valley Vision TV, Comcast Channel 7, in Roanoke, Salem, Botetourt, Lexington, and Blacksburg. Brought to you by Mac and Bob's Main Street, Salem. For programming information or schedules, go to valleyvisiontv.com. Welcome back to the best center. Tatum McKee's three has put the Maroons... Up by seven. Go back and take a look as McKee had come up with the turnover. Able to find Duggins. Now McKee goes right back to the corner. Duggins, as she's been able to do, is penetrating just like the first level of defense and kicks it out to the corner. Duggins made the play. She penetrated, left McKee open. The defender left McKee. McKee had spotted up in the corner, and she was able to make the shot when she received the ball. Excellent offensive execution by the Maroons. Hankins and McKee tied for the team lead in points with six. Duggins with four. Delahunt and Gwynn each with two. For Eastern Mennonite, they're led by Reinheimer, who has four. Soon Felde with three. Brown, Sykes, and Yotters each with two. Eastern Mennonite controlling on the offensive set. Out of the timeout, Sullenberger, Gwynn, and Hankins all back to work for Roanoke. As well, Baltimore has it at the top. Less than five minutes to go in the first half. We'll have to see how Roanoke closes out this half. As that pass goes right into the bleachers. From Eastern Mennonite, Roanoke will get it right back. Already I'm, a seven-point lead. I'm sure Coach Griffin is not happy with the offensive execution of Eastern Mennonite this afternoon. That was kind of an unforced turnover. So Sullenberger gets it in for Juggins. The pressure from Eastern Mennonite backing off as Duggins will slowly carry ahead. Eastern Mennonite does not press off of a miss or a turnover. Comes to the near side for Sullenberger. Off some feet. Goes to Delahunt. Try to speed that one down low for Paxton Glenn. Just high and out of her reach. Good idea by Delahunt. A little bit too high. The original pass by Duggins was tipped, and Sullenberger had trouble controlling it, but she was able to push it back out to where Delahunt could control the ball. Unfortunately, the pass was a little bit high going underneath to the post. This one run ahead by Baltimore up the left side. Tries to feed it in. Ronald quickly double teaming on Garza as she drives in. So it's going to be a blocking foul called against Sullenberger. But she reaches for her mouth because she took maybe an elbow or a shoulder up high. Foul against Capitola is her first, team sixth. That was a block, but you like to see that. They are, they are defending, and that shot was contested. As he Garza at the line to shoot two. 72% from the line this season. She connects on the first. The guards out of Conestoga, Pennsylvania. Unable to connect on the second. Still a six-point spread for Roanoke. Nice box out and rebounded by Paxton Gwynn. It's Delahunt shouting out orders. Goes to Hankins, was unable to control. Maya Young takes it away. The screen was set by Paxton Gwynn. Hankins was going to come around, but you have to catch the pass and control the ball. On the left side, this is Baltimore, covered by Sullenberger. Comes to the near side for Reinheimer. Back for Baltimore, and again Reinheimer. Three and a half to go. The first half of play. As it sends it towards the corner. Now it called against Roanoke off the ball. It's going to be against Paxton Gwynn. That's Gwynn's third. And Samantha Garth is back in the game for Gwynn. The other night, Gwynn was able to, she picked up three fouls in the first half and was able to play the entire second half without picking up another foul. She's important to the offense of the Maroons. One and one now for Garza. And she connects to the first. Hit one of two moments ago. Clock frozen at 325. Five-point game. Garza looks to make it four. Is unable to connect. Yeah, lane violation against Garza. Uh, lane violation against Baltimore. Now Sullenberger to inbound underneath. Sullenberger gets it in for Duggins. Will launch this one to the near side as Hankins saves my laptop. As Hankins drives in along the right side, sends it for Delahunt, who's unable to handle the pass. Goes out of bounds. Great pass by Duggins to, to, to start a break, but Hankins unable to finish. Still a five-point game. Sullenberger heads out for Rona. McKee in. Baltimore carrying ahead, covered by Duggins. Just over three minutes to go in the half. McKee nearly jumped that pass. This goes for Igarza. Igarza drives in, can't get the layup to go, gets her own rebound. Goes back up. That one no good. Punched out of bounds by Delahunt. I can see Roanoke uh, 
box out on the defensive boards and get the possession back. But good defense. Three people around the guards at that time. Under three to go in the half as they get it in. Free guards. I had some trouble. It's kicked out. Marley Young for three, and she drills it. 20 to 18, two point game. That was good defense, too. It was a lucky bounce for Eastern Mennonite. Well, it was collapsed because the ball went inside. Garza had lost control, but she was able to get it back and get it back to Marla Young. He's run up quickly, able to beat the press. Mr. Mennonite, Duggins drives in, comes to the near side for Tatum McKee. McKee looking things over. Tried to go out for Duggins, it's poked away. Look out, Baltimore. The other way, goes in, able to lay it home, and we're tied at 20. Eastern Mennonite has some great athletes, and Roanoke is going to have to watch those long passes on the perimeter. Eastern Mennonite has erased the seven-point deficit on a 30-second timeout taken by Dunnigan. She needed this one because Roanoke's a little bit discombobulated right now. Eastern Mennonite on a 7-0 run. Reinheimer still with four. Zufelde with three. Young getting her first points moments ago. And her only field goal attempt, it was a three, and she hit it. Two points apiece for Yotters, Garza, Brown, Baltimore, and Stites. Each team is in the bonus. Although Roanoke will be in the double bonus with another foul from Eastern Mennonite. Clock is stopped at 2.17 of the first half in a 20-20 game. Paxton Gwynn is on the bench with three fouls. Currently the Maroons' leading scorer out of North Carolina. She will wait on the bench. We'll see what happens come the second half. Coming back on the floor for Roanoke, Duggins, Garst, McKee, Della Hunt, and Hankins. I'd like to see Roanoke finish strong the last two minutes of this half. As Della Hunt looks like she's going to be pinned in her own end. They're able to work back out. As Della Hunt drives to her left, finds something, goes out for Duggins on the right side. Duggins. Tries to go to work. Now we wanted to go down low for Garza. It was knocked away and taken by Igarza. She goes behind the back and makes Duggins look silly. Igarza in, countered, and one. And she's able to get it off the glass. Roanoke having trouble getting back on defense if they lose the ball off a turnover. Della Hunt got back that time, but she was moving and called for the block. And Igarza able to convert the bucket. Igarza will look to give Eastern Mennonite the lead for the first time since the early minutes of this game. And she's able to connect. Eastern Mennonite takes a three-point lead as Delahunt will head out. Lemke in. It was a good idea last time down for Roanoke as Hankins tried to get the ball to Garst. As they throw a Hail Mary pass to Duggins. Duggins takes it along the baseline. The Maroons offense will catch up. Good idea. Tatum McKee tried to throw a pass that Duggins could run under and convert a layup. Just a touch too far, but Duggins able to control the pass. As Lemke on the near side tries to drive it. It's poked away from her. It's taken by Reinheimer. Again. Reinheimer back the other way, goes to Marley Young in the near corner, now back for Reinheimer, out to the top for Baltimore, just past the foul line, her jumper no good, Lemke takes the rebound. Again, you have to credit Eastern Mennonite's aggressive man-to-man defense, poked away from Lemke that time. If you have the ball, you have to watch from all directions because they're coming after it. And it's sent towards the far corner, Hankins out to the top for McKee, 15 to shoot for Rona. Comes along now for Douglas, near corner, Lemke. Lemke for Garst. Now Garst goes out for Taylor Duggins, Duggins drives in, she's fouled. Duggins, that would be against Baltimore. You have to give her credit. She created that time. Rather against Marla Young. For Young, it's her first, team's 10th. As that'll put Duggins at the line for two. Duggins will line this season 62%. As Duggins connects on the first. Again, Roanoke needs these foul shots to stay in the game. They need to make their foul shots this afternoon and really for the rest of the season. As Good. Duggins sinks two of two to make it a one-point game. Good job by Duggins that time. As Baltimore carries up the left side, goes to the top for Garza. Goes back in, Reinheimer inside, jumper off the front of the rim. Duggins was able to be drug away from the rebound. Young turns and throws one up, it's no good. As Hankins controls, gives it for Duggins. Words will carry ahead. 12-second oh. difference between the clocks. On the original shot by Eastern Mennonite that time, Kayla Lemke had an excellent box out, but again a crazy bounce. Laurel Hankins follows with the box out on the second one and almost knocks down a three. Long three, no good. 22 seconds remaining in regulation. Shot clock unplugged. Sent down towards the far corner. As Lefeldi, a long three, no good. Lemke knocks the rebound to Garst. He gives it for Tatum McKee. 12 seconds left in the half. Roanoke well, needs to take one this time. They need to take one. They must take the last shot of the half. Duggan slowly carries ahead. Five seconds. Duggan's just inside the arc. A long two, no good. Rebound Lemke. Goes up hard. Unable to connect. A horn will sound. That'll do it for the first 20 minutes here at the Bass Center. Eastern Mennonite able to erase a seven-point lead from Roanoke as we head to the locker rooms, 23-22. The Royals with the lead. Back with the first half recap and start of the final 20 minutes. Nick, I want to say real quick, that was a great effort by Duggins and a great rebound by Lemke on the last play. Just couldn't quite get the conversion.
Roanoke College. Timeless and true. Smart and solid. Practical and professional. Making discoveries about yesterday. Creating visions for tomorrow. Lifted by a winning college spirit. Forging lifetime friendships with professors who prepare you for a place at the head of an operating table or another bright future. Roanoke College. Classic for tomorrow. For information or schedules on Valley Vision TV programs, visit us on the Internet at valleyvisiontv.com. Remember, you're watching the Valley's only true local network, Valley Vision TV, Comcast Channel 7. Mac and Bob's opened for business in 1980. Over the years, we've grown from 10 stools to a full-service restaurant that seats 330 people. Now we invite you to come try our new breakfast menu featuring sweet potato pancakes, eggs benedict, omelets made to order, stuffed French toast, homemade sausage and gravy biscuits, and much more. Open for breakfast Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m., Sunday brunch, 10 a.m. till 2. See you for breakfast at Mac and Bob's in Salem. If you would like to sponsor this program or advertise on Valley Vision TV, call us at 540-397-1051 or email to sales at valleyvisiontv.com. Remember, you're watching the Valley's only true local network, Valley Vision TV, Comcast Channel 7. Roanoke College, timeless and true, smart and solid, practical and professional, making discoveries about yesterday, creating visions for tomorrow, lifted by a winning college spirit. Forging lifetime friendships with professors who prepare you for a place at the head of an operating table or another bright future. Roanoke College, classic for tomorrow. Be sure to catch Roanoke College Sports on Valley Vision TV, Comcast Channel 7 in Roanoke, Salem, Botetourt, Lexington, and Blacksburg. Brought to you by Mac and Bob's Main Street, Salem. For programming information or schedules, go to valleyvisiontv.com. Hi, my name is Emily Crew, and I'm majoring in business administration with a concentration in accounting. I thought I was going to go to a big school, but when I came to visit the campus, I fell in love, and it seemed like Roanoke picked me. When I came to school, I knew I wanted to get involved. Um, I knew I wanted to rush, but I didn't know which one I wanted yet. I saw the five new girls walking around campus. I knew they were a lot of fun, and they were extremely involved, and I knew I could fit in. Looking back, I couldn't be happier with my decision. I've been able to experience new leadership and service opportunities while making friends that will last a lifetime. Find new focuses on service and giving back. We participate in Salem Ambassadors, a group which works on projects to help our Salem neighbors. We also participate in Relay for Life each year as a sisterhood to raise money for cancer research. We spend the night together on the back quad, walking for the cause, participating in activities, and even playing on the inflatable obstacle courses. One, two, three, go! Another fun activity for me at Roanoke is participating in the intramural games such as flag football and basketball. This year, my team went 6-2 in the flag football, and we went on to win the intramural flag football championship game for the girls. Also, there's so many fun things to do outdoors in the Roanoke Valley. When it's nice and warm outside, I love to go tubing and canoeing. During my sophomore year, I applied to be an internet communications assistant in the public relations office and quickly fell in love with my job. My boss, Whitney Anderson, has really worked closely with me to ensure that I know the ins and outs of all web communication. My favorite aspect of my job is the video production side. We produce videos just like this one. I get to be right in the middle of the production, recruiting students, sitting in on spot checks, and anything and everything that goes on behind the scenes. Sometimes I even fill in to be a part of the video. I don't want it on camera. The best part is when all the hard work is done and being able to see the final product. It's the most rewarding feeling. We found the equipment that would help produce and increase your productivity. This summer, I was able to apply the skills I gained in the classroom by participating in the Roanoke College Innovation Challenge. My team and I created a business plan for a local lady who makes chicken pies out of her basement. We were able to make pies with Lisa and work with her one-on-one to ensure that we were building the business plan of her dreams. We worked around the clock constantly researching ways to improve her kitchen, whether it was making the process more efficient or reducing her production time. It was extremely important for, from a business point because it allowed me to see all aspects of a business and how to put it together and how it all comes together in the very end. With the help and the guidance of our program directors, Dr. Mike Smith and Dr. Kevin Baker, at the end of the program, we were able to present our final business plan to real-life investors. I feel like I can tackle any obstacles that come my way. I'm excited for my future. Get involved, meet as many people as possible, but most importantly, have fun. The next four years are going to be the hardest, most important, but most enjoyable time of your life. Take advantage of it.
Mac and Bob's opened for business in 1980. Over the years, we've grown from 10 stools to a full-service restaurant that seats 330 people. Now we invite you to come try our new breakfast menu, featuring sweet potato pancakes, eggs benedict, omelets made to order, stuffed French toast, homemade sausage and gravy biscuits, and much more. Open for breakfast Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m. Sunday brunch, 10 a.m. till 2. See you for breakfast at Mac and Bob's in Salem. Welcome back to the Bastard Nick Tosankos alongside Brett Peltz here, taking a look back at the first half stats. For Roanoke, Tatum McKee, Hankins, and Duggins each finished the first 20 with six points. Paxton Gwynn, in just 10 minutes of that first half, had two points, along with four rebounds. Two points to Rachel Delahunt. Nobody for Roanoke has scored outside of the starting five. A quick run through look at Eastern Mennonite Igarza with five, Reimer with four, Zumfelde and Young each with three, Yotters, Sky, Skikes, Brown, and Baltimore, excuse me, each with two. For Roanoke, an interesting player today has been Tatum McKee. She has six and six. 6.6 rebounds. Her rebounds are split. Three on the offensive end, all three coming on the defensive end of the court. Roanoke out-rebounded Eastern Mennonite in the first half, 25-20. to 20. That's a good sign. Unfortunately, had 14 turnovers, and Eastern Mennonite had 10. Eastern Mennonite, 8 of 11 from the foul line. Roanoke, 6 of 11. That's the difference in the score. A one-point game as Roanoke controls the opening possession of the second half. McKee stuck along the near side. Puts the ball on the floor, finds Hankins. Hankins cuts in, face to the outside, lays it in. Great driving lane by Laurel Hankins. She took it and she scored. Last night, Roanoke had trouble the first five minutes of the second half and the last five minutes of the game. We'll see how this first five minutes goes. It comes to the near side for Alyssa Brown, covered by Duggins. Brown goes inside for Yotters. Turns off the glass, able to get the bounce off the rim for two. The MU retakes the one-point lead. As again, the Royals will apply pressure. Duggins forced to take a timeout as she found nothing. Good design by Coach Griffin coming out of the half. Yotters is a tough matchup for Delahunt. She was able to get a layup. 30-second timeout taken by Coach Dunnigan. It looks like Eastern Mennonite will continue to press off made baskets full court. Not a surprise. As Roanoke shot 25% from the floor in that first half, Eastern Mennonite shot just 26. 14 rebounds for Roanoke, or rather 14 turnovers for Roanoke, 10 for Eastern Mennonite. As the Royals ran away with eight steals. Both teams had seven field goals in the first half. Roanoke had two threes, Eastern Mennonite had one. So I'd like to welcome those of you listening here in Salem on 100.3 WRKE. Also streaming online at WRKE.org. As Dillon takes the pass, try to feed it back across for Tatum McKee. That one taken away by Sykes. Sykes will move ahead before she hands it to Baltimore. Baltimore will work the point. Again, the athletes from Eastern Mennonite causing the turnover off the press that time. Rachel Delahunt a little bit a little bit late with the diagonal pass to Paxton Gwynn, but a good idea. As Reinheimer along two. That one no good. Poked at by Hankins. She keeps it in bounds. It rattles off fingertips off of Sykes and then out of bounds. Roanoke will get it back. 
Hankins was lucky that time. Nice hustle, nice try. I don't like to see defensive squad save the ball under the other team's offensive basket. That could have been a very easy basket for Eastern tonight. As the Royals again applying pressure, they have two up. And a three up to press two Maroons. Well, now Roanoke will force them back in their own end. Delahunt through the lane, off the glass, and then we get it to go. Rebound after it. Paxton Quinn lays it in for two. That's great hustle by Rachel Delahunt, Laurel Hankins, and Paxton Quinn, resulting in that field goal. Great pass from Hankins. Win Alyssa. with the offensive rebound to score. Alyssa Brown on the right side. Sends it for Reinhardt at the top. Sykes in the paint. Can't connect. Quinn the rebound. Ms. Quinn will look to come back the other way. Nice box out that time by Taylor Duggins and Paxton Gwynn. Was down low. Delahunt wide open. Really had no room. Kicks out Hankins for three. That one rattles off the front of the rim. Good idea by Delahunt after she realized she was too far under. Unfortunately, Hankins a little bit short on the three-pointer. That's down low. Yotters turn around. Get it to go. Coach Griffin is putting Yotters and uh, Sykes on the low post. And it's a tough matchup for Roanoke. As Gwynn can't afford any more fouls, really making that all the more difficult as Duggins drives it on the left side. Can't get the layup to go. But she was just trying to draw a foul. The Royals will run back to the way. This is Baltimore. Baltimore pulls up, comes to the near corner. Delahunt able to punch that one out of bounds. Good hustle by Rachel Delahunt getting back on defense that time. It's a good idea by Duggins. She just a little bit quick on the shot, a little bit long to take a layup from four feet from the basket. You said it's inbound from the near corner. They get it out for Sykes at the top. Sykes hands it on to Baltimore. Working the point to the near side now, Brown. Covered by Hankins, tries to drive in the lane, finds nothing. Goes back to Baltimore from the paint. Gives it off for Yotters, who kicks it out. Kept in bounds on the far side by Reinheimer. Seven to shoot. Now down to five. Brown in the paint on the run. Can't get it to go. Tatum McKee grabs it. Great team defense and nice box out by Tatum McKee that time to finish the play for Roanoke. Duggins gives for Hankins. Now long for Delahunt to the near side, Tatum McKee. McKee drives it almost unscathed. Can't get it to go. Gwynn, the offensive board, gets the putback. Second offensive board and putback this half for Paxton Gwynn. Roanoke by one point. As long as the near side, Alyssa Brown sends it back for Baltimore. Lexus went to the far side for Reinheimer. Looks towards the middle, skip past the near side, Baltimore. Out of the top for Brown. And again, Reinheimer for three. That one no good. Rebound Tatum McKee. Tatum McKee again on the defensive boards as Roanoke continues to box out well. Duggins pulls up on the near side. Skip pass across for Delahunt. Now at the top to Tatum McKee. Back to the left wing corner for Delahunt. Coming towards the top. Waves off Hankins. Now gets it to Hankins in the near corner. Hankins, no room to shoot. Eight left on the shot clock. Duggins at the point. Duggins crosses over, gives it for Paxton Gwynn. Gwynn, three to shoot, awkward jumper. Doesn't go, Gwynn turned away, didn't realize the rebound was coming right back to her. Reinheimer coming in, she'll turn back, finds Baltimore, out of the far side for Alyssa Brown, back for Baltimore, along for Sykes. Sykes in, on the paint, gets the floater. Sykes able to drive the open lane that time to give the lead back to Eastern Mennonite. Tough shot on the other end by Paxton Gwynn, as Duggins and Delahunt took a little long to set a play up. As Duggins drives towards the near side, pulls up for Hankins, for three, yes! Laurel's going to look for her shot when she's open. She's, she's making them, and she needs to look for it when she has room. Baltimore drives all the way in, can't connect. Rebound poked to Paxton Gwynn. Rhodes with a two-point lead. We'll slow things down as Hankins carries ahead. That rebound was poked by Tatum McKee, who continues to do great work on the defensive boards. Not many whistles here in the second half. We've played just about five minutes. As Duggan's the crossover, splits the defenders, drives in, tried to draw a foul, got nothing. <laughs> Racing back to the way is Yotters. Yotters sends it off the right side. Reinheimer. Reinheimer in from the baseline. Gets the roll. That's a good hustle by Easton tonight. They beat Roanoke back down the floor that time, resulting in a layup for Reinheimer. Tie game. Delahunt carries ahead. Moving towards the right side. 14 and a half to go in regulation. Delahunt back to the top for Duggins. Looking down low for Paxton Gwynn. Now kicks it for Tatum McKee. McKee looked to drive in. Hands it off for Hankins. Five to shoot. Hankins the crossover, rolls in, wanted to kick it to Gwynn in the corner, couldn't get it there. Hankins no. needs to look for that three-pointer when it's so late in the shot clock. He's on the near side, Brown going to try a three to break the tie, that one no good. Sykes the easy rebound, lowers her shoulder, can't catch him the short jumper, their offensive board, Yotter's off the glass, no good. Rebound taken by Duggins. You have to give credit that time on the defensive end from Paxton Gwynn and Taylor Duggins. The offensive rebounds for Eastern Mennonite were due to long bounces off long shots. Coach Dunnigan calling a full timeout now. I'm sure she wants some more ball movement and player movement on offense. Timeout on the court. 31-31 the score. 13-49 to go in the second half. Mac and Bob's opened for business in 1980. Over the years, we've grown from 10 stools to a full-service restaurant that seats 330 people. Now we invite you to come try our new breakfast menu featuring sweet potato pancakes, eggs benedict, omelets made to order, stuffed French toast, homemade sausage and gravy biscuits, and much more. Open for breakfast Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m. Sunday brunch, 10 a.m. till 2. See you for breakfast at Mac and Bob's in Salem.
Welcome back. Wholesale changes for the Maroons. They'll have the only one left on the floor. Schellenberger, Lemke, Garst, and Ward now checked in for the Maroons. They'll have working the point. 12 left on the shot clock. Schellenberger on the near side. Tries to go down low for Garst. That one easily taken away. Garst was easily pushed out of the post that time. As that ball lost out of bounds by Egarza. Schellenberger flopping, trying to take the charge. Ward's inbound for the Maroons. Again, just a minute applying pressures. They get it in for Lemke. Lemke gives it back for Delahunt. Delahunt in trouble with a double team. Goes to Lemke along the far side. Lemke carries ahead to the near side for Ward. Looked across for Sullenberger. Couldn't quite find her, so holds on. Lemke out to the top now, Sullenberger. Sullenberger to the near corner for Kayla Lemke. It's Lemke. Out for Delahunt. Six to shoot for the Maroons. Delahunt got a pick from Garst. Tries to go back down low. Garst in the paint. Offensive foul. Good idea by Delahunt to get the ball down low to Garst. Good play by the young woman from Eastern Mennonite as she drew the charge on Garst. Fallon Garst is her first team's first of the second half. 13 minutes to go. Game locked at 31. It's on the right side. Marley Young covered by Lemke. 2-3 zone for Roanoke. As we felt a third to the corner. Makes its way through. He guards it. Young on the far side for a three. That went off the mark. Rebound. Garst able to come away with it. Even with a Royal on the floor. Garst has to get rid of it. She's called for the walk. Good rebound by Garst out of the zone. It's very difficult. It's much easier to rebound out of a man-to-man than a zone. But unfortunately, before she was able to get rid of the ball, she shuffled her feet. Ball back to Eastern Mennonite. Young's inbound from underneath. Gets it out to Baltimore. And we'll go to work with a fresh 30. Megan Goodell is going to come in for the Maroons next dead ball. It's Maroons in a zone, locking all windows and doors. As in Felde, back for Baltimore. Just past the foul line. And they'll connect on the jumper. Rebound last touched by Roanoke. Next side of bounds on the near side. Good box out by Delahunt. She just wasn't able to control the rebound. Goodell in for Sam Garst. Baltimore has it at the point. Comes to the corner now. The skip pass back to the top for Baltimore. It's Baltimore. Near side for Zumfelde. Back now Baltimore. Baltimore goes inside. Igarza took too many steps. Fantastic defense by Megan Goodell forcing that turnover. I actually heard Coach Susan Dunnigan chatting with J.J. Nekoloff of the ODAC pregame. Really uh, some good words for Goodell. Good to see her in the lineup working hard. Especially with Paxton Quinn on the bench with her fouls. Quinn with three of them. Under 12 minutes to go in the game. Delahunt working the point for Rono. 18 to shoot for the Maroons. Delahunt across for Lemke. Lemke drives into the paint. Foul will be called on the floor. Took like a foul against Zoom Feldy. That'll be her first. Team's first of the second half. Happy Sullenberger to inbound from underneath the Roanoke basket. And Sullenberger inbounds to Goodell at the top. It's Goodell for Delahunt. Got a pick from Sullenberger. Now goes back across. Wanted to get it to Ward. It goes off the head of Young. Then in the bread basket of Ward. Ward crosses over, kicks it out. Goodell for three. That one off the mark. Good, e- good effort by Delahunt and by Goodell. As in Felde sends it underneath. Hard move to low post by Yotters. Couldn't get it to go. Young able to corral the rebound. Kicks it out for Baltimore from the foul line. Dishes it back down low. Yotters tied up with Goodell. Able to draw the foul. Yotters will go to the line for two. Foul on Goodell is her first. Team second. Paxton Gwynn and Taylor Duggins is the scorer's table for Roanoke. I'm sure Coach Dunnigan wants Paxton Gwynn back in the game for rebounding. That was a bad rebounding series defensively for the youngsters from Roanoke. Yotters at the line for two. Unable to connect on the first. Gwynn and Duggins returning to action. And against Sullenberger and Delahunt. As Sykes looks like she's set to check in for Yotters after the free throw attempt. Yotters to break the tie. Unable to do so. Rebound by Paxton Gwynn off the missed free throw. Duggins to bring it up. Eastern Mennonite back in a 1-3-1 looks like. Maybe a man-to-man, but no press that time. 15 seconds left on the shot clock. Duggins hands off for Ward on the left side. Ward walks to the middle. Skips it towards the near side. Back down low, hoping for Paxton Gwynn. Able to, unable to keep it in bounds. Nice hustle by Gwynn, but Gwynn's really the only post threat for Roanoke. And truthfully, Gwynn's out of position down there. But makes it tough. Good effort. Still 31-31 the score. Under 11 minutes to play as we approach the midway point. Now the second half. Sykes down low. Hard move to the cup. Can't get it to go. Gwynn and she tangle up for the rebound. Jump ball. Possession awarded to Eastern Mennonite. Jenkins and McKee back in for Lemke and Ward. Possession arrow to Eastern Mennonite. Roanoke's five starters back in the game. Except for Delahunt. Except for Delahunt. Goodell's, Goodell's in for, for Delahunt. That's a long three is off the mark. We're in a row. Got tangled up behind the play and went down. EMU able to come away with it before it's punched out of bounds. Last touch by Eastern Mennonite as Duggins was able to knock that one 
Looked like off of the Arza. Roanoke continues to compete on defense very well. It's all the way across for Hankins off the inbound. And Semenna again applying pressure. Hankins that force to carry it ahead. Still tied at 31. Hankins moves to her right. Goes to the top for McKay along for Duggins. Duggins back for Hankins off her fingertips. She's able to keep it in bounds. Ten seconds left in the shot clock. Roanoke has to make something happen. Shot clock down to six. Hankins tried to go down low. Foul called against Eastern Mennonite. It's going to be against Igarza. It is her third, team second. That was a good bailout for Roanoke because they were kind of lost on top with six seconds left on the shot clock. Now they have a fresh 30. 10-04 going in the game as we head into the last fourth of the game. Goodell inbounds to Hankins. Going a fresh 30. Down low, Paxton Gwynn. Count it. Great two-man play there by Laurel Hankins and Paxton Gwynn. Good turnaround by Paxton Gwynn. Just looking out the other end. Reinheimer for three. That one off the mark. Rebound, Hankins. Nice rebound by Laurel Hankins. As we're past the midway point of the second half. Clock down 9.43, 9.42, now 9.41. Duggan sets up on the near side. Goes to the top for Paxton Gwynn. Gwynn back to the near side for Duggins. Looking things over. Duggins walks to the middle. Sees a lane. Through the paint, she's fouled. Eastern Mennonite is not moving their feet. They're reaching with their hands, causing the foul when Roanoke takes a driving lane. Della Hunt back into game for Goodell, and now I'm correct as the five starters are back in. Yes, sir. Alyssa Brown called for the foul. Her second team's third. As Taylor and Yodders check into the game. Yodders has had better success in the post than Igarza this afternoon. As Delahunt gets it into the corner for Paxton Gwynn. Roanoke a two-point lead under nine and a half to play. Out to the top it goes for Delahunt. Look down low for Paxton Gwynn. Skips it for Tatum McKeel on the far side. McKee drives it all the way through the paint. Gets it to spoil for that two. That was a great drive by Tatum McKee and a strong finish. Roanoke by four. Nine, ten left on the clock. McKee almost able to pick the pass. Mr. Mennonite gets the offense set up. As Taylor stuck with it. Drives through the lane. Her floater no good. Rebound popped to herself and taken by Laurel Hankins. Great battle by Laurel Hankins. She outfought the Eastern Mennonite player for the rebound. As Tatum McKee floats it down low, hoping for Paxton Quinn. Knocked out of bounds off of the hands of Yodders. 19 seconds to shoot for Roanoke. They need to realize that. They don't have the full 30. As Delahunt to inbound. Gets it in for Hankins. Hankins for a three. That one comes up short off the front of the rim. That was a great idea by Hankins. Good look by Delahunt. It just didn't fall. Hankins needs to take that shot when she's wide open like that. Good idea. As Taylor will carry it ahead. 8.40 left on the clock. 35-31 game here at the Bass Center. Don't make the sink this along. With Brett Peltier. As a three-second violation called against Eastern Mennonite's Yotters. Again, you have to credit Roanoke's defense. They're playing so well this afternoon. Clock frozen at 8.31. Maroon's another possession. As Delahunt has it, she'll carry ahead. As Delahunt gets some support, still holding on to it. Goes out to the top for Laurel Hankins. Duggan's locked up, hangs to the near side for Delahunt. Ten left to shoot for Roanoke. Out to the top now, Paxton Gwynn. Covered by Yodders, now goes to Hankins, four to shoot. Hankins drives towards the baseline, her jumper bounces around and pops out. But a foul going to be called, it looks like, against Rona. It'll be against Paxton Gwynn, and unfortunately that's going to be her fourth. She went over the back. Hankins had a tough shot that time because she had to back up while taking it. Sam Garst into the game for Paxton Gwynn. This is a big time for Rona with Paxton Gwynn out of the game. Sykes enters for Eastern Mennonite, Igarza heads out. This is a lineup that's given Rona trouble this afternoon with Sykes and Yodders in the game. McKee is on Yodders. He tries to back her down. Got away with an offensive foul. She puts that one off the glass. Dunnigan furious. McKee trying to draw the offensive foul. Unsuccessful that time. As McKee carries ahead on the left side. McKee turns back. A two-point game. Seven and a half remaining. At the top, Duggins. Duggins goes behind the back. In the paint. Kicked out McKee. A long three. That one no good. Eastern Mennonite took the rebound. Then lost it to the floor. Roanoke back after it. As that'll be a kickball against Eastern Mennonite. As Brown tried to pin it. With Duggins off of her foot. Again, Roanoke battling battling for those rebounds. Coming up with some of them. Hannah Ward in the game for Duggins. Roanoke with a fresh 30. 7.20 to go. As McKee gets it out for Hankins. Hankins with Taylor in her face. To the near side for Hannah Ward. Ward scoreless to this point. Flips it out to the top for McKee. McKee able to drive in from the paint. Unable to get it to go. Garst was after the rebound. Taken away from her. Then Ward took it right back. Ward will give it for Garst on the corner. Out to the top. It goes for Delahunt. 
The far side, McKee. McKee drives it underneath, lays it in for two. Nice drive by Tatum McKee. Good look on the ball reversal by Rachel Delahunt. Roanoke is winning the 50-50 balls. As we, we have, have a travel. walk caught against Sykes at the other end. We have a travel uncontested underneath the Eastern Midnight Basket after they inbounded the ball on Sykes. That's the second time Sykes has done it tonight without pressure. Timeout on the court. 6.51 to go in regulation. Roanoke up four, 37-33. We'll be back after this for business in 1980. Over the years, we've grown from 10 stools to a full-service restaurant that seats 330 people. Now we invite you to come try our new breakfast menu featuring sweet potato pancakes, eggs benedict, omelets made to order, stuffed French toast, homemade sausage and gravy biscuits, and much more. Open for breakfast Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m. Sunday brunch, 10 a.m. till 2. See you for breakfast at Mac and Bob's in Salem. Welcome back to the Bassett Roanoke Cup by four. We can go back now take a look at our last play before the timeout. As Tatum McKee has really been in the middle of things most of the day. Missed the layup, but Ward able to come away on a great heads-up play. Anna Ward just digging and, and hustling for that ball. There's McKee wide open. Ball reversal by Rachel Delahunt, and she drives to the basket for the layup. And then Eastern Mennonite has an unforced turnover. like to see Roanoke score off this possession. Sykes was called for the walk before the timeout. And she actually threw it back to her teammate who was still standing out of bounds. So it would have been a turnover either way. Delahunt gets it in for Hankins. Roanoke, fresh 30 seconds on the shot clock. Already a four-point lead. Tatum McKee comes to the near side for Delahunt. Along further in the corner for Hannah Ward. Ward fouled. But it'll be against Alyssa Brown. For Brown, it's her third, team's fourth. This gives Roanoke another fresh 30. Sam Gar still in the game for Paxton Gwynn. Roanoke has had some success with this lineup with Paxton Gwynn out of the game with four fouls. Ward's inbound, gets it for Hankins. Hankins looking down low for Garst, but another foul against Eastern Mennonite. This one against Yodders for Yodders, her third, team's fifth. Yodders for holding underneath. As Roanoke gets it in for Hankins. Again, another 30 to work. Hankins trapped, able to get it across for Delahunt. Delahunt with space. Goes across for Samantha Garst. Garst walks towards the middle before she hands it off for Delahunt. Looking to the bench, gets the call for the offense. Ten seconds to shoot. Delahunt drives it on the right side, tries to center the corner, knocked away by Sykes. Shot clock down to five. Delahunt has to get one off from the baseline off the side of the backboard. Hankins will throw it up, and it counts! Laurel Hankins with a hustle. Roanoke again with a 50-50 ball on possession. Rachel Delahunt realizing the shot clock going down, gets the shot up, even though it didn't draw iron. Hankins from just inside the foul and had to just pick it up and throw it. And it went in. Roanoke lead extended to six. Under six minutes to play here at the Bass Center. Was that one kicked on its way by Delahunt? 15 on the shot clock for Eastern tonight after the kick. Let's see how Roanoke's defense holds up. 5.45 left in regulation. 39-33 the score. On the far side, Alyssa Brown sends it inside. We have a foul against Roanoke. It's against Tatum McKee. Her second team's fourth. They're saying McKee bumped the young lady right before she received the ball. Fresh 30 for Eastern Mennonite off the Roanoke foul. Baltimore working the point. Goes to Reinheimer. Back to Baltimore on the near side. Now Brown again. Baltimore drives into the foul line. Near side Brown to the corner for Sykes. Sykes has get passed all the way across for Baltimore in the corner. For three. Count it. Reinheimer hits it. And a quick timeout called by Kevin Griffin. He will take a full timeout with 5.22 to go. Roanoke oh. lead has been cut to three. Roanoke gives up the three. Delahunt a little bit late, getting Brown out of the corner. Roanoke possession to the comeback. 5.22 left. Eastern Mennonite full timeout. Roanoke College. Timeless and true. Smart and solid. Practical and professional. Making discoveries about yesterday. Creating visions for tomorrow. Lifted by a winning college spirit. Forging lifetime friendships with professors who prepare you for a place at the head of an operating table or another bright future. Roanoke College. Classic for tomorrow. Welcome back to the Bass Center. Let's go back a moment ago and take a look at a play that started with Delahunt. The shot clock winding down. Shot at this point at three. Pitching the paint. Hankins just picks it up and throws it as the light comes on. Well, we'll take those kind of ten-footers as long as they go in the bottom. <laughs> Inbounded for Delahunt. Looking back, now gives it for McKay. This is not a surprise. Eastern Mennonite, full court press. Probably see this the rest of the game. That's Hannah Ward, Tatum McKee, and Rachel Delahunt trying to 
As that ball popped out of bounds off of the Trying to bring the ball up. Taylor Duggins re-enters the game. Duggins and she'll get four. Hannah Ward. Makita inbound right in front of us. 5.04 to go. McKee gets it in for Duggins. Unless Duggins crosses over. Dumps to Tatum McKee. Back in the middle for Duggins. Duggins for Delahunt. Now across Hankins. Thinking three steps in. Hankins floated with one. The shot clock was no good. The rebound out. Last touch by Roanoke. Tough break that time. It was a good idea with the ball fake from Hankins, but I'd like to see her take that three. She was wide open. Eastern Midnight will carry ahead. This Baltimore sends it to her right for Reinheimer. Reinheimer to the top for Yotters to the near side. Now Brown. Brown back to the top for Baltimore. And again, Brown. Let's cycle through the top for Yotters. Across it goes for Baltimore. Baltimore for Brown. Eight left to shoot. Yotters inside. Kick at the bounce off the rim. Paxton Gwynn with a great rebound. Paxton has returned to the game with four fouls. As Duggins carries ahead for Rona. Picks it towards the corner. Now gets it back. Goes across from McKee to the far corner for Delahunt. At the top is Laurel Hankins. Hankins looks to drive the lane and does off the glass. Can't get it to go. Eastern Midnight rumbling back in the way. This is the Garza. Has it knocked away from her by Tatum McKee, who goes down hard after it. Ball makes its way out of bounds. Last touch by McKee. Possession to Eastern Mennonite. 3.55 remaining. Roanoke up three. As it's inbounded to Baltimore. Sets up on the right side. Baltimore the skip pass to the air for Brown. It's Brown. Goes down low for Yotters. Tries to go to work on Paxton Gwynn. Off the glass, gets two. And a quick 30-second timeout taken by Kevin Griffin. Pax- Eastern Mennonite has cut the lead to two with 3.40 to go. Paxton Gwynn had to take a... Def- she played great defense there. She contested, but she couldn't bring her arms down. It would have been her fifth foul. Let's take a look at today's Waking Up Maroon Echoes. Karen Jenkins, class of 1991. Jenkins, the sixth all-time leading scorer in team history. And after the 1990-91 season, became the first bird selected to the first-team All-American squad. She earned ODAC Player of the Year honors in 91 and was a two-time pick to the ODAC first-team All-Star squad. In her four seasons in Salem, Jenkins led the Maroons to two conference titles. In her career, which spanned from 1988 until 1991, Jenkins scored 1,235 career points. She's also third on the all-time rebounding list with 724. Jenkins, now known as Karen Harvey, currently an assistant coach at Ferrum. Karen Jenkins was a great player, a great center for Roanoke. Led him to the uh, Elite Eight in her senior year. That team was 28-2. and two. That's McKee got her fingertips on that one. The official says she didn't. Last touch by Eastern Mennonite as they let it go. Possession back now to Roanoke. Clinging to a one-point lead. 3.29 left on the clock. As the get it in for Duggins. Eastern Mennonite back to being very aggressive. To the near side now Tatum McKee. McKee drew the defenders. Goes across for Duggins. Duggan steps up, floats it ahead for Laurel Hankins. Hankins for Delahunt in the lane. Short great, jumper goes. Great press break by Roanoke, getting the ball in the middle. Rachel Delahunt with a short eight-foot jumper. As he guards it, tries to drive in. Sends McKee down the floor, missed her shot. Hash and Gwynn puts the rebound. A three-point lead, 3.05 to go. Gwynn carries ahead. That was a great defensive play by Tatum McKee. Almost threw the charge. Did contest the shot and caused the miss. Paxton Gwynn able to bring the ball up. Left to... Left a shot short, a four-footer, but Eastern Mennonite was not able to press Roanoke that time. 2.50 to go. On the right side, Reinheimer. Now to the top for Baltimore. On the near side, Brown. Alyssa Brown goes inside for Igarza. Igarza nowhere to go. Goes for Baltimore on the right side. Baltimore back to the near corner. Reinheimer for three. That one, no good. Paxton Gwynn collects the rebound for Roanoke. Paxton Gwynn, great defensive rebounding position. She continues to play clean with the four fouls. Eastern Mennonite is not pressing Roanoke off a of missed basket. As Duggins moves to the right side, puts the brakes on, gives it up for Paxton Gwynn. Gwynn for three, that one off the mark. Good idea, she was open, just didn't go down. All the way through the pass goes for Baltimore along the right side. Two minutes left, Baltimore walks all the way in and lays it in. And a full timeout taken quickly by Kevin Griffin underneath. We'll step aside, two minutes to go in regulation of a one-point game. Be sure to catch Roanoke College Sports on Valley Vision TV, Comcast Channel 7 in Roanoke, Salem, Botetourt, Lexington, and Blacksburg. Brought to you by Mac and Bob's Main Street, Salem. For programming information or schedules, go to valleyvisiontv.com. For information or schedules on Valley Vision TV programs, visit us on the Internet at valleyvisiontv.com. Remember, you're watching the Valley's only true local network, Valley Vision TV, Comcast Channel 7.
Welcome back to the Bash Center, taking a look at the stats so far. Just two minutes remaining in this one. Laurel Hankins leads the Maroons with 13 points, followed by Tatum McKee with 10. Paxton Gwynn with 8. Gwynn has played just 22 minutes. The Maroons get in for Duggins. Now Tatum McKee. Pressure being applied here by Eastern Mennonite in a one-point game. Under two minutes to play. Clock down to 152. Roanoke starting five in the game. Yellow Hunt able to bring the ball up against the press. 15 seconds for Roanoke to shoot. Shot clock clicks down now to 10. As at the top of Tankins. Hankins rolls back to the inside, kicks it out, Gwynn. Gwynn for three, yes! Big three-pointer by Paxton Gwynn, 91 seconds to go. Roanoke four-point lead, Susan Dunnigan with a full timeout. Dunnigan will take a full timeout. The Roanoke lead went from one to four. That's Paxton Gwynn getting her 11th point of the afternoon. Clock frozen at 131. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to the best center. Paxton Gwynn has up the Maroons lead to four. With her three coming up right here. Late in the shot clock. Roanoke had to make something happen. Gwynn really didn't have a whole lot of room. As Roanoke had to cycle it through Hankins. We see Gwynn break free towards the top. Goddard's just kind of stayed back before moving forward. Didn't think Gwynn quite had the space she needed. She popped out from the post. Hankins picked her up. She set her feet. Was able to drill it. Big three for Roanoke. Gwynn five for 12 from the four. Roanoke starters in the game for the last 131. Hankins, Gwynn, Delahunt, Duggins, and McKee on the floor for Roanoke. Baltimore, Brown, Yotters, Gigarza, and Reinheimer. First to midnight, Reinheimer the main three-point threat. Senior connect from beyond the arc a couple times so far in this one. Yotters along the near side, tries to feed it in the middle, but a foul called against Roanoke. It's going to be against Tatum McKee. Foul McKee is her third, team's fourth. That's only the fifth foul. Roanoke with still two to give, and Eastern midnight will uh, inbound from their baseline. 119 to go. Goes out to the top for guards on the near side. Reinheimer for three, and she knocks it down. Coach Griffin taking another 30-second timeout. Back to a one-point game. Coach was running, and she yelled shooter, but nobody picked up Reinheimer, and she was able to drill it from the wing. Reinheimer, the leading scorer for Eastern Mennonite with her 12 points. She's two for seven from beyond the arc. Taking a look at the team stats so far in this one. Roanoke is 17 for 53, shooting 32%. Eastern Mennonite 16 of 55, 29%. Each turnover battle about even, 18 and 20. Roanoke out rebounding Eastern Mennonite, 42 to 39. 31 27 that, on the defensive end. That's an important stat as they continue to battle. Roanoke starters again return to the floor for the final 73 seconds. Eastern Mennonite has one timeout left. Dunning and the Maroons with two. Logan's trying to shake free of the pressure, finds Hankins. Gwen open underneath. Hankins likes to hold on. 20 seconds left from the shot clock. Tatum McKee along the near side. She's fouled. Roanoke has two timeouts left, and that's the sixth team foul of the half for Eastern Mennonite. Roanoke is in the one and one from now on. Tatum McKee to inbound. Foul against Baltimore is her first. Team six. This Roanoke gets it in for Dillon. Kicked out Hankins. Hankins going to spot up a three. That oh. one no good. It rattled around the rim and popped out. Tough break. Laurel Hankins wide open. That's a full timeout taken by Coach Kevin Griffin. His final timeout. Clock stopped at 48.6 seconds to go. Right now, step aside. Be back with the final 49 seconds after this. Roanoke College. Timeless and true. Smart and solid. Practical and professional. Making discoveries about yesterday. Creating visions for tomorrow. Lifted by a winning college spirit. Forging lifetime friendships with professors who prepare you for a place at the head of an operating table or another bright future. Roanoke College. Classic for tomorrow. Welcome back to the Bass Center. Again, a one-point game, 48.6 seconds to go. So a welcome to those of you listening on 100.3 FM to the RKE in Salem. Roanoke's five starters return to the floor. 23 seconds to shoot for Eastern Mennonite. Game clock at 45, shot clock at 20. And that's Baltimore working up high. Comes to the near side, goes across now. Free Garza, further for Brown. They go underneath. Kick back out for Brown. The tie Reinheimer. And again, Brown, now Reinheimer. Comes to the near side, Baltimore. Three seconds to shoot. Baltimore took too many steps. 
Roanoke does not have to shoot. Let's see if they call a timeout. 28-4 left. Eastern Mennonites either going to have to get a turnover or foul. Hopefully, Roanoke can get a cheap, easy basket. As it inbounds of Duggan, she's fouled by Baltimore. Foul on Baltimore, her second, team seventh. Taylor Duggins before today, a 61% foul shooter. She'll have a one-and-one one to give Roanoke a three-point lead, possibly. Duggins two for three from the line so far today. Duggins' first attempt bounces out. Gwynn had a piece of the rebound, had to let it go. That's coming back up is Yotter. Shot clock unplugged in a one-point game. Roanoke needs to pick up their players. Down to 15. Baltimore tries to drive in, kicks it out for Reinheimer. Eight left to shoot. Reinheimer stuck on the run. Her floater goes. 5.9 seconds left and a timeout taken by Roanoke. Full timeout taken by Dunnigan. We'll stay with you. Reinheimer, the leading scorer today for Eastern Mennonite. Puts Reinheimer, bring her up to 14. Clock stopped at 5.9 to go. Eastern Mennonite does have seven fouls. If Roanoke's able to draw a foul, they'll go to the line for a one-on-one. Or a two-shot foul if they're able to be in a shooting situation when the foul is drawn. We'll see what Coach Dunnigan draws up. You have to give the young lady for Eastern Mennonite credit. Big bucket with six seconds to go to put them ahead. Brand, this is essentially Roanoke's last possession, their last shot. If you're Coach Dunnigan, whose hand do you want the ball in? Hankins or Gwynn? Passion and Gwynn today for the Maroons. 11 points on 5 of 12. Hankins has 13 on 5 of 14. She is 2 for 7 from beyond the arc. Gwynn posting a double-double today with 11 and 12. I expect pressure, ball pressure from Eastern Mennonite. Roanoke must move quickly. If they're able to catch an open cutter, I would expect it to be Tatum McKee. Tatum McKee will inbound the ball. Gwynn and Della Hunt, the cl- two closest to the ball. Rono gets it in for Paxton Gwynn. Under five to go. Gwynn to the far side. Hankins. Hankins turns back for Gwynn. Good if it goes off the front of the rim. Then Eastern Mennonite escapes with a one-point win here against Rono. Well, I, see, I said Laurel, Hankins, and Paxton Gwynn, and they went down the left side of the floor. They stacked the floor with Hankins and Gwynn. Hankin, uh, Gwynn just a little bit short on the three that would have won the game. Eastern Mennonite improves to 18 and 3, 14 and 2 within the ODAC. Roanoke falls to 4 and 13, 4 and 9 within ODAC play. Brent, I don't know about you, maybe even a little closer game than a lot of us would have thought it would be. Well, these kids are playing hard, and they're playing great defense, which is going to cause close games. And uh, yeah, I think they're going to get one or two of these wins before the season is over. The season continues against Randolph, uh, against Henry. Emory and Henry on February the 7th, which is Tuesday. And then they come back here to the Bass Center on Friday to play Randolph. Right now, we'll step aside be back with some final stats and our closing thoughts coming up next. Back here for some thoughts with head coach Susan Dunnigan. Coach, again, what I've been impressed with all year, the team competes so great on the defensive end. They do, and I, you can't take anything away from them. Um, game after game, they are out there, and they are busting busting it and just playing with every ounce of energy. It's just still you're looking at freshman mistakes. You're looking at the youth. You're looking at, ah, oh, you know, the belief that they can really do this. You know, they're just so close. And it's. I told them yesterday after our game against WNL, I just said, you know, we are just if we tweak just a couple of little things, we're going to get ourselves over the hump. But it's just like, ah, oh, when you miss a layup, when you miss all, you, we're shooting 50% right today from the free throw line. I mean, you got to take advantage of, you know, the easy things. And we just want to make it difficult, I think. Right. Uh, I'd like you to talk a little bit today. Again, the team. I thought, as you said, gave a great effort. But talk a little bit about the efforts of Rachel Delahunt and Taylor Duggins mm-hmm. and Laurel Hankins. Oh, yeah. Uh, with with Taylor and Rachel, and both of them are, basi- are basically really young, and having to battle constant pressure 
and still able to maintain their poise. And every now and then it slips. But for the most part, they do, they're doing an excellent job for us. And, you, can, you know, you can't praise them enough. And it's just, as I said, if we could just, God, just get a shot here, get a rebound there, get a steal, get a turnover, hit that free throw. I mean, we're right there. Um, and you got to love these guys for their effort. And, and, hey, Eastern Mennonite, they did what they had to do tonight. And very quickly, I know you want to go talk to your team. You have Emory and Henry Tuesday mm-hmm. on the road and then back here Friday with Randolph. Right. And, I mean, it's a, it's a huge week for us. Uh, uh, we need to we need to win, you know. We need to win. The, it, it, at least we need to win this week. We can win this week, then we go. We've got to upset somebody else in, in, in order to get in. But um, these kids are going to try. They're going to be there. You know, nobody can take us lightly, and I know that. And I, I love them for it. I'm just hoping that maybe, you know, again, one of those things, something's going to get for us. Oh, good luck to you, Coach. Hopefully it'll be a four- or five-game winning will. streak to it end will. the year. It will. And congratulations to Eastern Mennonite. They did a good job. They really did. And thank you, Brett. Thank you. Welcome back to the Bastard. Nick DeSantis alongside Brett Peltz here. Taking a look down the final line for rooms were led in points tonight by Laurel Hankins. Hankins finished with 13 to go along with five rebounds, two for seven from beyond the arc. Paxton Gwynn turning in another solid effort despite only playing 24 minutes because of her four fouls. Three, was it two or three in the first half? It was three in the first half. Three in the first half, really limiting her action. She was still able to play well. Five for 13 from the floor, finished with 11 points along with 12 boards. Tatum McKee, another solid effort. The starting lineup, 34 minutes tied for the team lead. And she finished with 10 points and eight rebounds. Six points for Duggins, four for Rachel Delahunt. Those are the only other Maroons to score. Brent, we had pointed out earlier in the game, and looking at the stats, it's reinforced now. No scoring for the Maroons out of their bench. Well, she had to go with the starting five most of the last 10 minutes of the game, so that's that's not that surprising. She has to be pleased with this team's effort. And as I've said, one of the things that's going to come out of this, no matter how this season ends, is character building. This, this is going to be a good team before these youngsters leave school. No, absolutely. When you have two freshmen in the starting lineup and you're taking on a team who's 18-2 and two, and it comes down to a last-second shot, we saw them take Guilford into overtime last weekend in another game where Guilford was a top-three team in the ODAC. Yeah, they, they, just played, they played really hard, and again, I know Coach Dunnigan has to be pleased with that. The breaks will begin to come for Roanoke, I'm sure. The Maroons have six games left on their schedule. Wednesday at Emory & Henry, then Friday night right here at home against Randolph. The next day they travel to Hollins and Lynchburg, Randolph, Macon, and Virginia Wesleyan the rest of the way. We'll have the home games for you right here on maroons.roanoke.edu potentially on WRKE as well. And I'd like to thank Nick DeSanctis today who came off the disabled list to perform for us. And, Nick, we hope Friday you're 100%. Thank you, Brett. I appreciate it. I'm probably going to be in bed awful early tonight but going around this small campus of ours. For Brett Peltier, I'm Nick DeSanctis. Thanks to our Sports Information Director, Brad Moore, Media Director, Reed Hall, Technical Director, T.J. Camper. For all of us here in Salem, have a great night.